We got the fresh, and we got the faded. We're here at the fly fishing show in Edison, New Jersey. This is the largest fly fishing show in America. Rods, reels, hats, anything you name in the fly fishing industry. Flies, fly tying, we got it all here at the show. It is insane. All right, before we get into this video, I want to take a second to welcome you to the Geek on the Water channel. My name is Jacob Nixon, and I personally take pride in the fact that fellow anglers will oftentimes call me weird, geek, or just plain nerd. None of that bothers me um, because I think it's awesome to be passionate about what you're doing. And a lot of times when you get passionate about something, you honestly just geek out about it. I'm going to show you time and time again on this channel that there's absolutely nothing wrong about being labeled a geek. So if that interests you at all or you can relate to that, please follow along for more. And the best way to do that, honestly, is to hit the subscription button. I'm well on my way to my goal of a thousand subscribers. So if you could do anything to help with that, I would greatly appreciate it. And I want to hear what you all think of this video today. So definitely hit the comments below. That's enough of that YouTube jargon. Let's jump right into the video today and I'm going to hit some B-roll for you and I'll come back and explain who we got on camera to talk to us at the Fly Fishing Show in Edison, New Jersey. Welcome back. This sick cup right here actually has a lot of meaning to me. I bought it this year at the show to commemorate my first ever false albacore I caught on the fly this year down in North Carolina. I went to the fly fishing show and interviewed what I felt were the four most innovative companies at the show. So I have the pleasure of sharing those interviews with you today. So we're definitely going to jump right into those right away. But be sure to stick around to the end because I actually took some time to ask some personal fun questions to from each of the interviewees. So today on the docket, we're going to talk to Norvice, the owner, Tim O'Neill. We're going to talk to Orvis, uh, one of their representatives, Tom Rosenbauer of Orvis fame, of course. Uh, we're going to talk to Wes Siegler, the owner of Siegler Reels, uh, more specifically Siegler Fly Reels. And then we're going to talk to John Mauser, the owner of Mauser Fly Fishing, uh, most specifically their fly rods. So let's get right into that and we're going to go right into our first interview with Tim O'Neill here. Tim is actually the owner, like I said, of Norvice and Norvice markets itself and is actually truly, in my opinion, uh, the most innovative fly tying system on the market. Now, if you've never seen this before, listen to what Tim has to say. He explains it all. I don't want to butcher it for him, but let's jump right into that first interview. Here we go. Hi, my name's Tim O'Neill. I'm the owner of the Norvice Fly Tying System. We're here at the Fly Fishing Show in Edison, New Jersey. What sets us apart from all the other vices on the market, and there are tons and tons of great vices out there, is our zero axis rotation in that when we rotate the hook, the hook spins on center. And when you think about the world of fly tying, 90% of what we do, we're wrapping some type of material over the shank of the hook. And with a zero axis rotation with the Norvice, we can do it faster, we can do it more efficiently, and in my opinion, we can do it better. And that, coupled with the auto bobbin, just makes for what we like to call the most innovative fly tying system on the market. Everything is, is made in America. Uh, it's made basically by me in, in the machine shop that I manage. We have a lifetime warranty. Basically, if there's an issue with a part, we're going to replace it. Our number one goal at Norvice is to have happy customers that are tying great flies. I would like people to know that, that when you look at the vise, it looks very different than, than any other vise out there on the market. And to just give it a chance and, and see what we can do with it and see what you can do with it. And the fact that once you get through the learning curve, it, it will make you a better fly tire. Next, we're going to take some time to talk to Wes Siegler from Siegler Fly Reels, as I promised before. He's going to explain to us what his one-of-a-kind drag system does and what it kind of brings to the industry. Really exciting. If you've never seen these fly reels before, you got to check this out. Uh, it actually won uh, Fly Reel of the Year at 
ICAST. So real exciting stuff. Let's see what he got. I'm Wes Sigler from Sigler Fishing Reels. I'm here at the New Jersey uh, Fly Fishing Show. Excited to show off the new reel that we won uh, best to show in the fly fishing division at ICAST this year. On our reel, we have a drag lever here that allows you to go from zero degree, like zero pounds of pressure to a predetermined maximum. So you can go from, if this is 10 pounds of drag before the drag slips, you can reset that. You can make it nine pounds with one click. So now it's nine pounds of drag at max. It's a progressionary ramp here. Goes from zero, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So you have total control of the fish throughout the fight. So there's no more need to palm a reel where you sometimes get excited and you can break off a fish. You also notice this massive handle. It's an aluminum machined handle. The, sh the shoulder's actually made into the frame, so there's no chance of bending it or knocking it off or breaking it off. Um, it also helps you with your, gives you a good handle when you're grabbing it for, for fighting fish. As you'll notice the shape of the spool, it's cut to the inside. Well, that, this allows you to, when you're battling the fish and you're retrieving your line, your backing just falls straight into the lower side there. It takes a lot of load off the reel's axle and it's very helpful when you're fighting a big fish. You don't have to level one. This is the whole reel exploded out, taken all apart. And all you need to do to take it apart is have a hook right here. So a hook can make your reel come apart. So if you're remote fishing and you feel something funny, you can take it all the way down. Appreciate you coming out today and checking us out. To say I'm excited about this next interview would be the understatement of the year. I have been a fan of Tom Rosenbauer for at least three or four years. When I started listening to podcasts for fly fishing, I found the Orvis podcast. Tom Rosenbauer, of course, is the host of it. Tom has been very influential in a lot of the stuff that I've learned and geeked out about in the fly fishing industry. But Tom, if you're watching this, thanks again uh, for doing the interview with us and thanks for telling us about the awesome pro wading boot that you all have designed and worked with uh, Michelin on getting better. So Tom, will go ahead and take the floor and explain that better. I'm kind of giving away a little bit of the magic. Hi, I'm Tom Rosenbauer from Orvis, and this is our new pro wading boot. We wanted to have a boot that was designed for really athletic anglers. You know, people don't think of fly fishermen as, as being athletic, but uh, the way people fish these days, you know, you spend a lot of time scrambling around on rocks, you walk a lot, um, and we wanted a boot that you could not only be safe in the stream, but be safe on the trail and on snow and on ice and, and whatever else you're going to do. So we wanted to design a boot from the ground up and we didn't want to use the same old sole that everybody else is doing. So we went to Michelin. You trust Michelin with your kids going 70 miles an hour on a slippery highway, right? Who else are you going to trust to build a sole for a wading boot? Michelin. And Michelin designed a special rubber compound for us that is extremely grippy. The material itself has 43% better resistance to slippage than the standard Vibram sole that are put on wading boots. Michelin also helped us design the tread pattern. And the tread pattern is based on one of their most aggressive agricultural tires. So think of a big machine going through a slippery, muddy field. So it's really designed to, you know, to walk in difficult conditions. It's gonna be better than standard rubber um, without studs. With studs, I think it's as, every bit as good as felt. We wanted to make a boot that's gonna last a long time. And besides, besides putting a molded uh, toe cap on there so you don't have any stitches here, we actually reduced a whole bunch of seams in the upper. So what we did, we designed this molded PU cage. And that is molded over the boot so that you've eliminated a whole bunch of seams in this area. It's not a super heavy boot for all that durability, all that ruggedness. It's a quite a lightweight boot. This boot dries 
as quickly as our ultralight wading boot. It's just a great all-round boot. It's designed for somebody who really fishes hard and fishes all day long. Well, I really hope you stuck around for this final interview because you're about to hear from what I think is one of the most dedicated companies in the industry. Uh, Mauser Fly Fishing, which is owned by John Mauser, who you will see in this interview, is such an American-made, quality-driven just company. Um, I love everything that they're about. I want to support them as best I can, and getting them on this video was such an exciting opportunity that I couldn't turn it down. Once they agreed to it, I said, yes, let's do this. Um, so let's hear a little bit about the Mauser fly rods. And John, thanks again for taking the time to talk to us. Uh, look forward to seeing you out there on the water sometime. I'm John Mauser with Mauser Fly Fishing. We are a USA made fly rod company based out of the Southern Outer Banks of North Carolina. Uh, we manufacture a couple different series of fly rods from the three to 12 weight range. Uh, several of us are fly fishing guides on the coast and we also trout fish. So we base our series on basically building the best possible quality rods for every type of fishing from trout in the mountains to tarpon in the Florida Keys. We currently have two different series of fly rods. The first one we came out with is called the Waterman. The Waterman ranges from four weight to 12 weights, excluding 11 weights. The other series we have is a freshwater series or a trout series called Arate. Arate uh, is a three weight through six weight rod ranging from eight foot even to nine foot in length. Some of the things that make our rods unique, besides the attention to detail, um, are the components. We use quarter inch rings and our floor grade cork. What that does is allows for if there's any issues with the cork where there's chips, they're much smaller than on other cork handles. The cork handle is also denser, so it lasts longer. For stripping guides, all the rods are outfitted with Fuji titanium stripping guides. So they are corrosion resistant and they're also flexible as the rod bends. Inside of them, we use silicon carbide inserts. And for the snake guides, uh, we get guides from Snake Brand, Mike McCoy. He um, basically makes a unique shaped guide that is round instead of teardrop shape. The line when you're shooting at the fly line only touches one side of the snake guide and less friction versus a teardrop shape where the line may get stuck between two sides of the guide. They're also coated with something called e-coating. They're completely corrosion resistant. They're also slicker than a normal snake guide. We use a minimal amount of thread on all of our guides. What that allows us to do is use less thread, less epoxy, and less weight. Another unique thing that most companies don't do is we spine each section of the blank. So we spend the time to roll and find that spine. Those few extra minutes allow for a rod that casts more accurately and is more pleasurable to fight fish with. Just in case I forgot to say thanks to everybody that I interviewed, um, thanks again, Tim. Thanks again, Tom. Thanks again, Wes. And thanks again, John. You all were so awesome to take time out of your very busy weekends to talk to me and to talk to our channel here. So we really appreciate that. Thanks for all the information you guys shared with us. Uh, now I get to share the fun questions with everyone back home. You all are going to really enjoy these, I think. So the first question I asked each one of the interviewees was, what is one thing you wish you knew about fly fishing or the fly fishing industry before you got into it? And then the second question I asked each one of them is if you had to choose another profession outside of the fly fishing industry, what would that be and possibly why? All right, guys, enjoy these. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, definitely hit that subscription button before you kind of get out of here. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Let's go. My number one thing that I would recommend for any anglers getting started, no matter their age, is put in the time to get an hour or two with a casting instructor. Let them get started with that good foundation for you, and then you can build upon it over the years. I think, what are my qualifications? I can drive a boat. I'm good with a nine foot fly rod. So obviously the answer is pirate. So pirate is my answer. Uh, and I may take that up as a hobby anyway. What I would do if, if, I, if I didn't have Norvice or I wasn't in the fly tying industry, I'm, I'm fortunate enough that, that my real job and the job that allows me to do Norvice, I'm a uh, master machinist. So I get to make really cool parts and pieces out of raw material with computerized machines. And, you know, I still do that today. That is part of, of what Norvice is. And if I didn't have the vice, I, I would still be doing that. And I, I still love every day of it. I didn't realize how 
how nice the people are in, in the fly fishing industry and how it really is a family. And one of our competitors, Regal Vice, w was here yesterday and, and we were talking, you know, like, like we've been buddies, you know, our whole lives. But here we are competitors and, and at the show we'll compete and we'll compete for sales. But then we all go out to dinner together, you know, at the end of the day. And it's just a really cool, close-knit family and I'm really happy to be a part of it. I've been fly fishing a long time and it might be hard to think back, but I guess it would be um, that fly fishing can be really simple and you shouldn't overcomplicate things because it's just fishing. I think I would write cheap spy novels and make a lot of money um, so that I had more time to fish. How easy the people are to work with in the fly fishing industry is one. Two, how cool the sport is. It's good, it's pure. You catch the fish, you'll fly, it changes you. I'm not too sure on that one. I've gotten to do a lot of things I've wanted to do in my life. So, there's a lot of, mm, that's a hard one. I'm still trying to figure it out.